This week, Jeff Johnston heads to Arizona and meets Pippi Peterson, a young lady that can hold her own against anyone, and then some, when it comes to RV DIY projects. Also, we had such a great response from the Tedford Smart Toe 2 story and contest we held last year that we're doing the whole thing again. Be sure to check it out and enter. And Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 shows us one of his basic RV driving school lessons on reference points. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Rolling On TV is brought to you by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. You meet a lot of interesting people out on the RV trail. Most of those RVers, at some time or another, have to do some maintenance, repairs, or upgrades to their vehicles. And a lot of those RVers choose to use a plastic wrench to do that work. And that's great if they're not comfortable doing it themselves. However, there is the other side of the coin, which is RVers that roll up their sleeves, get, get out their tools, and do the whole thing themselves, or as much as they can. We'd like to introduce you to Pippi Peterson. She's a young lady who lives in a classic Bounder motorhome. And Pippi, to say that she's a do-it-yourselfer is really kind of uh, an understatement on the term. She does more projects on her vehicles than most RV owners will ever think about. So let's take a close look and get to know Pippi Peterson. Tools, RV hardware, and knowing what to do with them are Pippi's specialty. So I'm Pippi Peterson and I grew up in rural Oregon, you know, on a lot of land and because of that my parents were always building things or with animals and stuff like that and so I kind of developed a sense of uh, enjoyment for physical work as well as, you know, the details that come along with uh, construction and, uh, you know, um, some mechanical stuff and a bunch of DIY stuff. So my dad was an electrical engineer and so he was always tinkering with things and uh, you know he went beyond just electrical stuff doing mechanical things and construction and so I was always around that and I, I just loved it. It was amazing you know to see these tools that he was working with and that they could do certain things and I you know that was really appealing to me and exciting and then as I grew up I started realizing that you know some some tools that might be small that you have in home can be like bigger to do bigger projects and uh, you know it was just amazing to kind of see the world um, be able to question and see how the world is put together you know these different industries and stuff like that and uh, it's just very appealing to me when the idea came about to buy an RV, that suited, you know, so many different things in my lifestyle. One, I can now move around. I didn't have to pay extra rent for my dog, you know. I didn't have to share walls with anybody. And I could, you know, I didn't even need a lease. Plus, then it also allowed me to do all my renovations. So it was like suiting in so many different ways. From accessory installations to major upgrades, Pippi has done them all. New flooring plus extra insulation and wainscoting were one RV renovation project she tackled. She has significant YouTube and Facebook followings of fans who keep track of her projects. A lovely shot of my septic system. <laughs> I've done so many kinds of projects on and in my RV from design stuff like interior design stuff to uh, mechanical stuff and a bunch of electrical stuff which has been really exciting. Some of my most popular electrical videos are my DIY you know home done solar installation where you know I had to build my own frame to put my panels on my roof and you know wired it myself. I have extra heavy batteries for my for an RV so I had to build some um, you know, extra support for that, getting that all hooked up. That's probably one of my most popular uh, series is all the solar videos I've done. 
probably one of my most difficult projects was converting my RV from 30 amps to 50 amp dual phase, which allows me to run my both air conditioners at the same time, which is great because I love to live in the hot areas. So you want to make sure to get caulking underneath the awning track, and that'll help from potential leaks in the holes that you're going to be making with the screws. All right, here's the last one, number 58. Ugh. Studying the detailed instructions and researching technical matters are a standard part of her process. With the awning rail installed, next comes the awning tube and arms. All right, so I'm just gonna take this out of the shipping tube. I think if you just stand on it, it might, uh, I can bring it a little lower. We'll be right back with more about Pippi Peterson and her Carefree Colorado awning installation right after these commercial messages. Simply put, Thetford's AquaChem has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaChem, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaChem, another great product from Thetford. We didn't make the majestic mountains, or the rugged terrain, or paint the night sky, but we make it possible to see it all. Road Trek, America's number one selling touring coach for over 25 years. Built with quality so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the destinations you want. Enjoy the peace of mind that only a road trek can provide. Welcome back to Rollin' On TV. Let's learn a bit more about Pippi Peterson, a proficient RV do-it-yourselfer, and continue following along with her Carefree of Colorado awning installation on her motorhome. All right, this is the motor one. Okay. Carefree says the awning arm brackets need to be installed before raising the tube and installing the fabric on the coach. Close the arm. Th that's the only thing. I didn't open and close it. So the next step is to get the arm attached to the roller assembly. So you can see that um, you have to line it up a little bit. And before you do this, you want to make sure that the fabric is going you know, over and up toward the mounting uh, track, not under beneath. Some of the steps seem a bit clumsy for one person, but Pippi muscles through the jobs right. with a plomb. There are times when you need to call in reinforcements on a larger project, and raising the completed awning into place is one such occasion. It goes like this, and then you lift it like this, and then you're going to want to walk over here until that end is able to line up with the track and then I'll be on the roof and I'll help feed the track through. Making sure yeah. everyone knows what to Perfect. do is okay. an important first step. Pippi uses a small cargo trailer as her portable garage and tool shed. It's also a shady spot to escape the sun for a few moments. You can flare this uh, beginning part of the track out so that it's got a little bit wider space to go through. Two extra friends help okay. her with the fabric installation right. part of the job. Up. You guys got it? Okay. The friends supported the awning and support arms while Pippi guided the fabric into the awning rail near the roof. Jim, can you lift yours up a little higher? As a hint, Oops. make sure you use robust friends with muscles for this part of the task. Should we put oil on it? I the mean, tops of the awning arm brackets why, uh, were bolted into a structural uh, frame member near the wall and roof interface. Oh, there we go. Okay. Heavy duty pop rivets with special commercial grade expanding fittings secure the lower sections of the brackets. Okay. So it's not actually going to fit this way because of, of this uh, base down here. But what's cool about this tool is you can turn the head and there and now get into some pretty tight spots. The average home style tool may not work, so Pippi used an industrial quality DeWalt pop riveter. Oh, cool. Yes. 
The next step is testing the awning extension. Fingers crossed. Ha! It works! <laughs> Pippi used a cordless right, tool battery to run the awning out and back again before proceeding with the permanent wiring. Very cool. I'm so excited. Next comes the wire routing. This is a great time to remember the old saying, measure twice, drill once. Routing the control and power wires inside the RV can be a challenge, but it can be done both neatly and safely. Easy wiring access and convenience for operation are factors in electric awning control panel switch placement. What's next for Pippi's RV plans? This lady is definitely not an armchair RVer. A major cross-country trip is in the works. So I'm really excited about my trip. I've done a lot of work and maintenance so far to get ready for it, but I still have some other things to work on. For example, I definitely want to change out all my tires, and I want to do a complete cooling system maintenance and check on that. Also, my projects are getting more and more complicated, and I'm kind of needing to upgrade all my tools and make sure that I'm hitting the road with you know, a lot of confidence. Recently, I've added a new crew member aboard my RV, and that is my rescued Greyhound, Chase. He's accompanying me, and he's very excited about his retired life, and I'm happy that I was able to help him out. Chase knows how to handle the Arizona heat. There's something truly satisfying about a hands-on job well done. The carefree awning install was a challenge, but it worked out just fine. Thank you so much for visiting. We'll see you next time. For additional video of this story and Pippi's full awning installation video, visit our website at rollingontv.com. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Never run out of propane again. With Level Check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. Hi, I'm Jeff with Rolling On TV. We're here at the campground with Andy from Thetford. And Andy, last night we had a really great time with the chili cook-off and the draft beer tasting festival. <laughs> But obviously that's going to put a real stress on the system on here in the trailer. So uh, it's a good thing we're here to talk about your new Smart Tote 2. Portable holding tanks have been part of the RV industry for decades, but uh, you guys have come up with some pretty sophisticated new features from what I understand. You're correct. Portable waste tanks have been around for a while, and for those that don't know, they're used when you're at a campsite and there may not be a dump station nearby. So as you fill up your holding tanks, rather than breaking camp to take your RV to the dump station, you can fill into the portable waste tank and then take your portable waste tank to the dump station. And Thetford, as the sanitation expert, we've really taken a close look at what is needed by the RVers. We want to make it the most convenient process uh, for the RVers. We recognize that this may not be the most fun thing to do, but uh, we've, we've designed it in such a way that um, it can be easy and can be very clean and sanitary. Well, sophistication is something that the average RVer may not think about when in terms of a uh, portable waste tank, but uh, your new product sounds pretty interesting, so let's go take a look at it. Yes, yeah, so here we have our 27-gallon LX unit. LX stands for 
uh, luxurious, if you will. And, and what it has is it's got a handle built in and some front wheels, which makes it a lot easier for towing. This is a 27 gallon, so it can be heavy, over 200 pounds. And a lot of people want to be able to use the handle and the wheels to tow it. Yeah, and I notice there's a little cutout here that looks an awful lot like the diameter of a hitch ball. That's right. So if you're not hand towing the unit, um, you can mount it to a ball hitch and tow it with a vehicle to the dump station. Yeah, slowly, cautiously. Correct. Right? It's yeah. not built for the Indy 500. Uh, you want to keep it within a five mile an hour uh, uh, speed, so. Yeah, well, it, uh, it's nice to have it tall like that so I can stand up without having to bend over to work on it. That's a That's good cool. point, Jeff. One of the things that we did with this handle is we made it a telescoping handle. For a tall guy like you, it telescopes and you can extend it. Here it is extended and you can see it's very comfortable. Uh, I think you're comfortable, are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, be able to stand up here without bending over. Good. That's cool. Good. And for a guy that's a little bit shorter like me, if you don't want to telescope it, you can simply uh, have it telescoped down and I could tow it as well. Yeah, very cool. You've got the smart tote tube positioned next to the trailer where it's supposed to be. We're ready to go. What's next? All right. So before you fill the smart tote tube, the first thing that you want to do is open this little compartment door. And underneath this door is a built-in level gauge. Um, all Smart Tote 2 LX models come with the built-in level gauge. Now, what do you think is great about the level gauge? Well, uh, if I'm cooking a turkey, the red button pops up and says I'm ready. And I suppose that that gauge is calibrated for vegetarian on one end and paleo on the other. Is there something <laughs> along those lines? Kind of like that, oh, okay. Jeff. You're, yeah. you're, on, you're okay. on the right track. So what happens is, is when you're filling the tank from the bottom, liquid rises and that stem pops up and the water will uh, shut off, the, the stem will shut off flow. Okay. And it prevents a messy overfilling situation. Okay. So now that you have that compartment door open, uh, you're ready to fill the tank. Okay, so do you think a first timer can, can handle it? I think you should give it a shot. Okay, we'll see what happens here. All right, so step number one, of course, I saw earlier, open the compartment and take the vent off. And this just stretches out, okay. And once it's connected, it's just... You simply open the valves and fill the tank. If there's any remaining liquid in here, you shut the valves, you press the stem down on the tank, and that will release oh. any liquid that's remaining into the hose back into the tank. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so it knocks out the air, the air pocket. And, Correct. Okay. All right. And then... Now you're ready to take it to the dump station. And we're supposed to hold this up just to keep everything that's, that's at the water level in the tank? Okay. Exactly right. You're not a first timer, are you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've had a couple of bowls of chili in my day, so... <laughs> okay, and then we just collapse this back down. That's an interesting sound it makes. Okay. Fold it up, and now we're ready for the walk. Correct. Great. All right, here we are. First things first, open the vent cap. And now, and let me know if I do something wrong here because this is not a place where I want to make a mistake, okay? <laughs> I got you covered. If I remember right, we open this up, stretch this guy out. Yeah, take the cap off, the keep cap the hose off. elevated. Yep, yeah. because of the liquid level in there. Pop the dump tube on here and then put that nozzle in. Now that nozzle comes equipped with all LX models. Oh, okay. The 18, 27, and 35 gallon LX all include this sewer nozzle, which is a nice feature. You don't have to buy anything else. Okay, and then we want to maintain that, that upside down P trap. Correct. Right? So put that down here and then to dump it, there's no valves or anything. All we do is yep. push down on the hose. Yep, once you okay. have your nozzle in the sewer, you push the hose down just like that and uh, wait for the holding tank to empty. Okay, and if and uh, we talked about the level a little bit, so if uh, you said the tank is made to automatically dump with, with the bottom? The That's shape? right. Everything inside the tank is uh, meant to have a gravity feed so that all the liquid contents uh, completely evacuate the tank. If you're on level ground, the tank will completely evacuate. All right, and then once it's emptied, we once again raise it back up and uh, rinse that off when we get back to the campgrade, campsite. Put this on, 
quickly, Correct. I suppose. All right. Simple Collapse as that. that. guy back down. Cover that up, and then for the sake of the neighbors, we'll seal that back up. Great job. Perfect. Okay, terrific. So easy. Now, another feature that's built in is a clean-out port. And when you're done emptying the holding tank, you can simply open this little door, insert a garden hose, wash out the tank, rinse it nice and good, and then simply close the doors. The tanks come in uh, several different sizes. Our, our two-wheel versions come in a 12-gallon, 18-gallon, 27-gallon, and 35-gallon. Okay. Our LX models, which we demonstrated here today, come in three sizes, an 18-gallon, a 27-gallon, and a 35-gallon. And the two-wheel versions just have a handle and you more or less carry them like a uh, luggage in an airport with the wheels? That's correct. It's, yeah. a, it's a hand tow. We do offer an accessory tow strap uh, that you can purchase separately. Um, that is an option. Uh, we basically have a size um, and a price for any budget. Well, it looks like a pretty darn handy thing to have if you spend a little bit of time in any one given campground. They're very handy and uh, we sell a lot of them. So it's been a great product for us and, uh, and we look, look forward to uh, helping people with this situation. And it looks like with the improvements you've made too, it makes it even easier to use. That's right. Well, I'd like to thank Andy from Thetford for helping us to learn a lot more about the Smart Tote 2. Let's go, Jeff. Okay. Oof. Dang. Must be all that rich living. <laughs> Roll on TV and Thetford are giving away six LX model Smart Tote 2s, one each week for six weeks starting July 1st. To enter, just visit our website at rollingontv.com and click on the Smart Tote 2 LX contest page and sign up for the drawings. Now, isn't that simple? At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at jayco.com or just log on to rollingontv.com. you have a Truma Aquago instant hot water system, you can expect to make a lot of new friends. Today's driving skills segment is on reference points. When you're driving a large RV, it can be difficult to know if you're staying centered in your lane, especially on narrow roads. Understanding how to set and use reference points can solve this problem. Let's see how it's done. A problem some people have when driving a motorhome is maintaining a straight course. In a car or truck, you have a hood in front of you to use as a sight, but in a motorhome, you have very little in front of you to assist in staying on a straight course. The best way to solve this is to establish reference points. While you are at the parking lot working on other driving skills, park the motorhome with the driver's side on a long line and see where that line intersects the bottom of the windshield. If there is no specific reference point, like part of the windshield wiper blade, mark the spot with a piece of tape or some other type of marker. Now, move the coach, putting the line on the passenger side, and mark the windshield in the same manner. This will give you your limits. These marks will give your subconscious some help staying centered in the lane and maintaining a straight course. These reference points will work fine when driving along straight or gently curving roads. Remember that reference points will be different for each driver, so if you switch drivers, each of you will have your own set of reference points. Now you can set your reference points and take the worry out of keeping your RV centered in your driving lane. This RV driving skills tip is from our Drive Your Motor Home Like a Pro video. Happy camping. 
We hope you enjoyed this week's program. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos and stories from current and past shows, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. As usual, this has been another fun production.